Hey y'all, welcome to Rich Aesthetic. I'm Rich and iOS 17 is literally dropping tomorrow or in a few hours, depending on whenever you're watching this. And even with all of the sick marketing features that Apple has created for iOS 17, it's not gonna be immediately apparent what's new when you update. That is until you start jumping into apps and seeing, you know, those what's new splash screens that Apple has made. Even after reading through that, largely iOS 17 looks pretty much the same. So let me run you through what I think you should set up first. So that way you can start feeling how different iOS 17 actually is. We're gonna start with the UI customization features and then jump into some settings and toggles I recommend changing. And finally, just a couple more tips on what I think you should try out. As always, Check out the chapter markers to jump to the part of the video that you are actually interested in watching. And while you're down there, consider tickling the subscribe button and hitting like. It really means a lot. So let's jump into this. First up, we're gonna take a look at contact posters. Now this is a really cool feature that is going to change the look of the contacts app, incoming and outgoing phone calls, as well as FaceTime calls, as well as the new feature called Name Drop, which is essentially a digital business card. Now to create your contact poster, you're gonna go into the contacts app and then find yourself, should be at the top, and then tap on edit, and then tap on edit underneath your profile photo. At this point, it's gonna ask you if you wanna edit the profile photo or contact poster. Then tap on contact poster. Now in the edit contact poster mode, you can jump into camera to take a new photo right then and there. Jump into photos if you already have one you want to use. Use a emoji or just stick to the classic monogram. Once you've chosen the photo or emoji that you wanna use, you can also change things like the font of your name as well as the size or weight and then also the background colors that you're using. Now, once you've created your first contact poster, the really cool thing is you can actually have more than one. Now, only one will ever be active, but by having more than one, you can set up a couple different ones that you might wanna use for different situations when you're sharing your contact with friends versus with business clients. Now, finally, please tell your friends and family about this feature because it's not going to fully change iOS 17 and the way that looks for you unless everyone in your little network is, you know, updating these. You gotta start thinking about iOS as a social network, honestly, with, you know, FaceTime phone calls and iMessage because these are all the different places that this can come up in. But if no one is editing them, you would have to create the contact poster for everyone and, that's just not as fun. All right, next up, let's jump into stickers. Now, Apple finally added a native sticker creating and drawer for iOS. And the great thing is it's native and it's not locked into iMessage. You can use this anywhere where the emoji keyboard is accessible. This is probably Apple's most open software feature. Now you can create stickers in a few ways. The most likely way or time you'd probably wanna create a sticker is when you're in the messages app anyways. So from there, tap on the plus button and then tap on stickers and then tap on that folded circle icon if you're not there already. Now you can tap on the plus button and then select a photo. Once you've chosen the photo, wait a couple moments for the subject to be detected and then the background to kind of be washed out. And if it was a good detection, you can go ahead and tap on add sticker. Now, if it wasn't a good detection, I would just, you know, hit cancel and look for a different photo that hopefully the subject is better detected in. That being said, I haven't run into any unusable cutouts so far. Once you've added a sticker, automatically the callout menu should open and then you can tap on add effect or rearrange your stickers. Now, after tapping on add effect, the options are outline, comic, puffy, and shiny. Those last two having a 3D light effect when you move your device around. Now, all the effects do turn off the live photo feature. So if you have a really cute live photo like this one of my cat, Curious, maybe you just rather opt for not using one of the effects. Now, another way to create stickers is from the Photos app, which is probably the second likely way you'll do this, where you, maybe you see a photo that is perfect for creating a sticker. Now, just like if you were to, you know, tap and hold the subject to, you know, use it in another app, like was going viral with iOS 16, 
You're gonna tap and hold on the photo and then let go when the call up menu opens and then tap on add sticker, which will then open up the same sticker editor view that we had in iMessage or the messages app, but it won't open up messages. Once you've added the sticker after the subject is detected and then an effect if you want to, that sticker will appear in the sticker drawer, but you can continue using the Photos app as you were. And finally, like I said, these are accessible anywhere where the emoji keyboard can open. So if you're creating a new Instagram story or a Snapchat story or sending a Facebook message on Messenger, you can go ahead, open up the emoji menu, then swipe over to the left when you see the stickers and it'll show you the most recently used stickers or frequently used stickers. And then also that circle icon that is folded and you can tap on that to access all the stickers you've created. Now, it is worth mentioning that depending on which messaging system you're using, the live photo or the live sticker animations may not show up as like a, you know, transparent GIF. They may just show up as a still image. But hopefully that gets fixed if developers are able to support it in some way here going forward. All right, now let's jump into standby modes. Now, if you haven't heard about standby, that means you're probably like Patrick and living under a rock. But standby is probably the largest new UI overhaul anywhere apparent in iOS 17. And this can be activated when your phone is charging and in landscape position. Now, importantly, apparently not everyone knows this, but it's not a MagSafe only feature. All what needs to happen is your phone needs to be charging and in landscape, and then it will activate. And also it has to be still. So if I'm holding it, it, I would have to hold it very still for it to activate. Once your phone is in landscape and charging, after a short moment, standby will activate. And this is probably your first time seeing this. So you'll get a little tip explaining what standby is. Now, once you've exited out of that tip, there are three views. The first one you'll see are the widget view, which is using two of the small widgets found on your home screen and they're side by side. If you swipe to the left, there's a photos view and then swipe to the left one more and then there are a few different clock views. And the great thing is that each of these has a few customization options allowing you to personalize it to the best way that suits you. First, talking about the widgets, if you tap and hold to enter jiggle mode, just like on your home screen, they open up in the kind of stack editor. So you see the little minus button if you want to remove those widgets, or you can tap on the plus button to add some more widgets. You can access all of the small widgets, but if there are any widgets you have that are not officially supported for standby, you have to scroll all the way down to the bottom and then tap on other where you can access those. Where notably some of Apple's own small widgets are not fully supporting the feature yet, like Game Center and Fitness and Sleep. Next, if you swipe to the left to go to the photos view, this is pretty cool. There are a few pre-made smart albums such as featured, nature, pets, cities, and people. Now, any of these can be hidden by press and holding and then tapping on the little eye icon that arrives on them. Or if you wanna add some of your own, you can then tap on the plus button and then choose any of the albums that you've already created, such as this one here, my travels to Thailand. Now for the albums you create to get rid of those, you'll have to press on the minus button, which will remove them. There's no way to just hide them. Lastly, swiping to the left once more to get to the clock view, they all can be long pressed on to then customize, but one of them has absolutely no color options, whereas the others all have a few, maybe some more or less than each other. So, and this allows you to change the colors. The one that has the least amount of color change is the one where you see your alarm as well as the date. And there you can just change the icons for the little alarm icon or the calendar icon. All right, last up for UI changes in iOS 17 are widgets. Now you've probably heard that they're interactive now and that makes me so happy. So this is a smaller change, but I recommend that you revisit the widgets that you may not have ended up using because of the lack of interactability, such as the music and podcasts widgets, which now allow you to play or pause the album or episode. But also if you of course tap on the album or episode itself, it will open up the app just like the iOS 16 behavior. So you're not actually losing any functionality here. Next, take a look at the brand new home widgets of which there are two. 
The one that we've had most of iOS 17 beta are the interactive ones to turn on and off accessories around the home. Super helpful. Unfortunately, there's only a small and medium widget size for this. And then the other new home widget, which is brand new as of the release candidate for iOS 17, which is that new grid forecast. Now in my region where I live, Shanghai, this is not active or available. The widget is there and I can also access it in the home app, but again, there's no data. But if you're in the States, you should be seeing this data. So that's kind of cool. Next up, Safari has widgets, and these are the reading list widgets, of which you have all three sizes, small, medium, and large. And then check out the contacts widget, which is pretty cool as the small contacts widget, which only shows you one contact that you have it set to, has the option to turn on the buttons, which are the message and call button. They're both either on or off. You can't have one on and not the other. And when you're editing that widget, you could choose which number or email you are going to be iMessaging. And that means if you have other numbers set up for other apps like WhatsApp, you could set the button to do that as well. And the call button can also be set to a FaceTime call instead of a phone call. Finally, if you didn't use the reminders widget before because it was honestly kind of just pointless, now you might want to reactivate that as you can't actually check off items when you've completed them. So. That's probably my favorite widget, to be honest with you. That's it for customization in iOS 17 regarding the UI. Now I'm gonna jump into the settings and toggles section of the video where I'm gonna go a little bit faster. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is go to settings and then go down to passwords and then password options. Here, you're gonna turn on verification code cleanup. This will allow the system to delete those 2FA codes that you get in text messages or email, which yes, you heard that right, email, super cool new feature. Now, you're gonna jump back out and go down to Safari. In the Safari settings, set up some profiles for the different aspects of your life. If you're a gamer like I am, I have a profile for that where I can keep all my tabs regarding Elder Scrolls Online. I also have one for work where I'm an ESL teacher, so I have all the different websites I use for you know creating materials and stuff in those favorites. And then by default, you'll have the personal profile, which is, well, just for your personal things, you know what I'm saying? Now, while you're still in the Safari settings, scroll on up and then consider turning on the private search engine as now your private Safari windows and tabs can have their own default search engine, so you're not required to use Google. Of course, you're not signed into Google, but if you would rather use something even more private, such as Duck go you can set that to be the default search now talking about the safari profiles again jump out of the safari settings and scroll up to focus modes now choose one of the focus modes that you kind of set up a safari profile for such as if you made a safari profile for work go to your work focus mode and then scroll on down to go to the filters tap on add filter and then safari and hopefully this is fixed <laughs> by now, but you should be able to set up a Safari filter for the tab group or the profile that you want it to open when you're in that focus mode. So I have my personal focus mode set to the personal Safari profile, my gaming focus mode set to the gaming profile, my work one set to fast, that's my work, and then also my creating focus mode set to my creating profile, which is for YouTube and stuff like that. I think this is super cool, and the last filter I really, really want is reminders filters to keep my reminders separate depending on which focus mode I'm in. Although I get that that could be a little bit more difficult. Now some keyboard stuff. Go ahead, jump back to settings, go up to general, and then go to the keyboard settings. Now here I would recommend turning on dictation if you have turned that off in the past because dictation has been totally revamped and is now much faster as well as more accurate. So that may be the reason you turned it off in the past and you might wanna try that out again. As well as turning on auto correction because now you can actually use curse words without it trying to change fuck to duck. So that is super cool. And they even had a shout out at WWDC of Craig Federighi popping a joke about that. All right, 
Last thing in settings, consider going to accessibility settings and setting up your personal voice. This is gonna create an AI generated voice based off of your own voice and it takes about 30 minutes to set up. So if you have some time, I would recommend doing that, um, especially for those of you who may have some disabilities or speech impediments where you might be losing your voice and hopefully you can save your voice digitally so that allows you to use it throughout the OS. Now, once you've created it on the phone, as long as you're signed into your same Apple ID on your iPad and Mac, the personal personal voice will be available there as well. And the great thing is you can set up more than one personal voice. And what I'm hoping is as Apple updates this feature, you know, making it better, the AI side of things, I'm hoping it'll be able to use those same recordings you've already made and then just regenerate it with the new algorithms that they've created to do whatever the hell it is that you're doing in the background. So fingers crossed for that, but it's pretty cool. It's a little bit buggy still as far as getting it to work with the live speech feature, but I'll report back on that once it is better. And that's it for the settings and toggles that I recommend changing. All right, that's all I got for this one. I, I love iOS 17. It's getting a lot of flack for maybe not being as, you know, shiny and new as people may have hoped, but I, I think it's pretty cool. And if you take the time to set some of these things up, which you only have to do once every year or tinker with throughout the year, I think you'll find the benefits of it as well. So let me know in the comments down below if you set up iOS 17 and how, you know, what features you're using the most or are most excited for. While you're down there, one last time, tap that like button and tickle the subscribe button if you wouldn't mind helping out the channel. Thank you so much. I've been Rich on Rich Aesthetic and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Thank you.